we are ready for an aqua basin test. Let's go find Dave as well as somebody else that can help us because we gotta move a lot of steel on top of this basin to see what the maximum capacity is. <laughs> we are here at Hogar San Miguel right in the middle of downtown Ponce. And this is a small orphanage here in the community. So we wanna give back to this community by creating a small decorative water feature for them. So we have our winter retreat here. We have all of our CACs coming in from around the world. We all are right here in Puerto Rico having an incredible time. But while we're here, we wanna to try to give back. Let's go check this out. putting in one of our aqua basins. If you're not familiar with this technology, this is a solid rotationally molded container. It has openings for pumps. I'm gonna take one of these little pumps. It's gonna get installed inside and we're gonna run piping underneath it. And that piping is gonna pop up through the middle. You can see we have all these little slots and joints and stuff in here. We're gonna have this beautiful decorative sphere on the top of it. That sphere is gonna create that agitation that we're looking for, which is gonna release that incredible sound as well as those negative ions that we all crave. So once that pump's installed, piping going over to the decorative component, water's gonna recirculate over the top of it and it's gonna go back down those slots and end up down in the bottom. The nice thing about this you can turn it off and on at will so you can cut back on water usage but you still have the sight and sound and then we're also going to light it up so this is going to be spectacular every single night stay tuned and if you're looking for the exact how-to installation of this definitely check out team aquascape We are ready for an aqua basin test. Let's go find Dave as well as somebody else that can help us because we gotta move a lot of steel on top of this basin to see what the maximum capacity is. Thankfully, Kevin's in his office already, so that's gonna be perfect. Hey, what's up guys? Hey. <laughs> we talked about that aqua basin stuff earlier. Yeah. Are you available now to uh, give me a hand with that stuff? Yeah, 100%. And we're Let's also gonna need uh, some muscle. All right. Also, yeah, there you go. Came to the right spot. <laughs> Let's head on up. Yeah, 22, 2,200 pounds, basically. 2,260. Wow. Jeez. So we just finished loading up all the steel plates on top of the basin, but now we want to have Dave explain exactly how the structure is actually created because this is a structural unit. It's designed to hold heavy weights, not necessarily steel like this, but large basalt columns, cored out pieces of granite stone, big fountain displays and things like that. So it's designed to handle an incredible load. Plus up in our area, we have freezing, we have thawing, we have that push into contraction on top of this system. So we have to have something that's structurally sound. Dave, do you want to explain the design process yeah, yeah, when you were absolutely. coming up with all this stuff? The aqua basin is a lot like our other products that are buried under the ground. Like Ed mentioned, it's designed to handle freeze thaw, load capacities. It's made rotational molding. Rotational molding is a real simple process where they're pouring in a powder plastic into a big cavity. You start to rotate that cavity. As it heats up, that plastic liquefies and starts to coat that cavity and the wall thickness actually starts to happen then. It's extremely, extremely durable. Very thick, all your corners are actually the thickest parts, which is what you want from a construction integrity, mm -hmm. especially with freeze thaw. But what makes this capable of doing that, it's a big hollow tub, but it's what's underneath, which are these support cones. Each of these cones here, 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 and here, and then up in this area, go right up underside the deck on top of this. And they basically kiss off to that deck. So the space at the tip of this is very, very small, and that plastic I was talking about, how it starts to actually coat the inside, 
coats in between the top of that cone and right here. And you can see we have a do not drill because this deck is allowed to be modified. You can put holes in it and run plumbing through it and light cords. But these areas right here are where the cones and those kind of like structural supports are, are sitting on the underside. That's what gives it the 1,500 pound capacity is what we have stated. We're at over 2,000 here. We're over 2,000. I mean, it's, and it didn't even budge. I mean, you can, you can keep going on that. The balance we actually have though is we want to have a lot of water in this, right? So mm -hmm. we've got just under 100 gallons of water. Every time we have one of those cones, it takes away the, the mm -hmm. volume of water that's in it. So it's kind of a Goldilocks approach. You want just enough cones to support the weight, but leaving enough space to have the water to run the fountain and, you know, keep and, going. And these slots in here, that's to get the water back inside. Yeah, so correct. the pump goes pump in that, goes in in that corner there. There's a cover in this. Uh -huh. The whole goal of any of our product is to have it be buried out of sight. Right. You know, you don't want to see it at the end of the day. So this is all actually covered up through the gravel. The water will go back down through these drainage channels. Your pump will be sitting over here so you can access it, turn your valves, throttle up how much or how little water mm -hmm. you actually want or to service it. But at the end of the day, it's all buried and buried and out of sight. Over in Puerto Rico, it's gonna be in front of a school, but it's kind of out in the public. So the reason we went with this versus some of our, our traditional methods, they might be climbing on top of yeah. it, kids yeah, playing right. on it and that type yep. of stuff. And we don't want to compromise the structure. So this is perfect for commercial yeah. locations for any type Absolutely. of abuse like that. Absolutely, it's, like, it's rigid, yeah, it's which awesome. is nice. All right, well, I can't wait to install this. Now what we got to do, we got to move all those weights back. <laughs> Kevin. <I know. laughs> small island just off the shore of Puerto Rico and we are in a mangrove island it's really really cool so what I love about this is the unique biodiversity found within these little locations as well as all the habitats that has been created because of these plants I mean now let's go in the water and check this out obviously it was a shallow area it's a very shallow bay right here off the mainland so you have rock and reefs and things like that that are built up but then when they start getting a little bit higher to the surface you're gonna start getting some of these mangroves that are actually gonna take root in that shallow water and then the mangroves you can see how these root structures actually grow they're gonna actually branch out from the main tree itself and that actually stabilizes everything but what it does is it creates this incredible labyrinth of all these root structures and you have very very slow water that gets trapped in between so it becomes a nursery for a wide variety of fish species but what it also does is this is part of the filtration system you've heard me talk about this before and again this is a saltwater system not fresh water but the concepts are pretty close the paraphyte and all the stuff that grows on these plants biologically is very very diverse and what we're trying to do is we're looking at all that stuff but what happens is you have different velocities of water going through all there that sedimentation 
sedimentation process that occurs. You have a lot of biological activity, but as those sediments continue to get trapped inside of all this, because now this the, the wave action has actually been tempered by this point. So you have those sediments and things like that that are gonna start to filter themselves out. When that starts to occur, you, you start to get more and more sediment buildup in between all of these things, and eventually it's gonna shift and you're gonna see a succession from the mangroves into some of these other terrestrial type plantings. Now they still may become inundated obviously during heavy rain events, large storm surges and things like that, but this is the anchoring system for all that. So it's gonna really create a protected haven for all types of wildlife, but the island actually is gonna continue to grow and expand over time because these plants are gonna to continue to spread themselves out as they get more and more room to grow. So it's actually really, really fascinating to kind of watch the lifespan of an island system. How it actually grows from almost nothing and then it's all of a sudden over hundreds if not thousands of years that island's gonna to continue to expand out. So it's really, really fascinating to see the lifespan of these incredible, unique island systems. This has been one incredible time here in Puerto Rico. We are in Old San Juan right now, getting ready to head back to the airport, just checking out some of the beautiful sights of this incredible place. You know, I'm definitely coming back, but just an incredible experience overall, going up into the mountains, checking out the bioluminescence, looking at nature, working with all the CACs, doing that cool little project, all these different things that came together. It's just been fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing all of you on the next project. All right, everybody. See you soon.